So Jan has produced some of Australia's most critically successful and popular films, including the AFI winner, Last Days of Chenu, the three-time Academy Award winner, The Piano, the Camera Door recipient, Love Serenade, the Golden Lion-nominated Holy Smoke, the AFI Best Winner, Lantana, and the multi-award winning Bright Star, which was nominated for The Palm Door. So Jan, your body of work is not exclusively, but almost all films with female protagonists. Um, uh, <coughs> Are you drawn to that? Is there a particular reason for that? I guess so. <laughs> um, yeah, recently I, I, I happened to see a trailer of films that I'd produced or executive produced. And I must admit, I was surprised at the... Not only that they were um, mainly um, based on female protagonists, but um, what the nature of these protagonists were. And I was struck by some of the words that um, Helen used about... Um, qualities that perhaps we need in our female prot protagonists, like obsession, rage and might, personal power, charisma, humour and sexual desire. And I think if you think of um, Ada or Holly Hunter in The Piano, um, Kate Winslet in Holy Smoke, um, the fact that Bright Star was told from Fanny Braun's point of view and the fact that she was a very determined young woman, um, the, the Alice Bell um, penned Suburban Mayhem with the, the wild Emily Barclay. I mean, I was just like, how did that happen? I mean, and I, I think the, the, the how it happened is that um, they were all um, instigated by, by female directors and writers. Um, even the films that were not quite so obviously um, very, very strong, uh, wild protagonists had qualities that Helen mentioned, like in Love Serenade, the, the two sisters are uh, competitors um, for, um, you know, the mad DJ who comes into town, but they end up uniting and driving out, uh, rowing out on the river and pushing him overboard. Um, in, in Gillian Armstrong's The Last Days of Chez Nou, um, a woman and her sister are, are vying for the woman's husband, but there is still this incredible, compassionate friendship and love between them. So. I mean, these stories are all coming from women with very clear points of view. Um, they know their characters really well. They're interested in the complexity of them. I mean, if you think about Ada in The Piano, the thing that Jane always talked about right from the beginning was Ada's will, her stubborn will. Um, and, and that was a quality that she, she actually originated from a, a friend of ours, a contemporary character. Um, Ada was someone who, who had, you know, a tiny little character, but um, the will to stop herself speaking, the will to get her piano up from the beach. Um, and then, when she was sexualised, the will to discover how she could express that um, and, and get it for herself. I mean, I can't tell you what it was like going around America um, and promoting the piano, um, it happened that I was doing it because Jane wasn't available, but people, but particularly women, would clutch me <laughs> and say, I love that film. And it was like this, um, as though women had never been able to express sexual desire ever before. Um, of course they had, but I really believe that that was what um, women were responding to. And then, of course, their husbands would say, yes, and I like it too. And um, you could see that the women were drawing the men into the cinema. It, it was really a phenomenal experience um, being involved with that film. Mm. So in the current marketplace, are you finding that it's harder to find finance and marketplace backing for films with female leads for a female audience? Um, you know, I kind of have this attitude that... Um, I work on films I believe in and I try to find the right match for those films. Um, as it happens, I, I have found that there's been a lot of men um, in the world of distribution and finance who have uh, pushed some of those films, who's associated, you know, Troy, for example, um, Francois Ibanel at Pathé uh, was a big believer in Bright Star, Harvey Weinstein in The Piano and, and um, a French man, Pierre Rissiant, originally helped finance that film. But it's like those individuals had an understanding of the female sens sensibility behind those films. They often believed in the directors. I think um, both Jane Campion and Kate um, have 
a real uh, a real following now. People, and, and you know, there's a list of women directors that have the same kind of um, very very strong interest in their work. Um, of course, they do tend to be more art house films. Of course, they do tend to have that slow build distribution pattern. Um, Actually, um, Megan, I'm about to start on the financing trail for a couple of films <laughs> um, with female protagonists, and I guess I'll, um, I'll see whether it's changed. But I just believe that you'll find somebody who understands the complexity and the complication of the story you're trying to tell. Um, I do fear that I have been um, influenced by the idea that maybe older women um, act actors are harder to finance. Maybe I try to push an age down of a character because I think we'll have more choice of marketable actors. I mean, that, that's a perception that I've somehow bought into that, that worries me. I mean, when I think of all the older female actors that I, I love so much, like Charlotte Rampling and um, Helen Mirren, and, you know, you, you just think, oh, let's just create um, characters for them. But I mean, my process with work is not to decide I will make a film about a woman. Um, it's to respond to stories that I either read about um, or somebody comes and talks to me about, and, and that's just the way it's worked. Well, one of the good pieces of news, if you're taking films out to the marketplace, that recently we had in Australia, through Martha and Screen Australia, UK-based veteran sales agent Tim Haslam, whose company is currently in Bankman out of London, and he said that the arena of international quality film, which is the international arena that most Australian films play in, he feels women are the most reliable audience because they've often read the books on which the films are often based, they take their friends, they refer to their friends more often, and they discuss more in person and on social media. So you talked a bit about your audiences. Have you seen those trends in your, in your audiences? Um, I'm sort of very heartened to, to hear you say that. I mean, only anecdotally have mm. I seen those trends. I mean, I mean, what interests me is that I think women are, are interested in quality films in the sense that they're character-based, they're, um, you know, they're, they're just more complex stories often. I mean, last weekend I went to see The Hunt. It's directed by a man. It's got a really interesting, psychologically mm. deep... Uh, story going on. The cinema was almost completely full of, of older women with the, the occasional um, man in tow. Um, so anecdotally, <laughs> I'm seeing those trends. Um, but then you also hear of, um, you know, younger people, like my young female um, personal trainer who I really hardly ever see. But, um, <laughs> you know, I say, what have you seen in the movies lately? And she says, oh, well, my boyfriend likes you know, blah, blah, or, you know, um, so they off, I, I do feel like a lot of younger women are going to the cinema because their boyfriends are leading them along. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, my experience, for example, with Cannes is different to Troy's in the sense that personally, I've been involved in, in you know, two films by, by women, um, or by Jane, uh, that have been in competition. Um, Kate's Somersault was in a certain regard. Um, Suburban Mayhem, not directed by a man, but written by a woman, very strong female character in a certain regard. Um, of course, Shirley Barrett's Love Serenade won the camera door in Cannes. So, you know, I'd have to say that I have not had the experience that, that women are sidelined. Um, however, I think the fact that the, the figures show what they show means that we have to keep bringing awareness to the facts. Um, I mean, it's very hard to analyse the reasons for this, but, but I find myself continually looking back to the reality of, of my um, personal history, which was that in the 70s um, I was involved with, with um, very active women's groups. The Sydney Women's Film Group um, actively fought to have a year-long course at the film school where we learnt the technical reality, you know, learnt how to load um, cameras and... Um, learned how to make films, learned how to edit, the whole thing. I do believe knowing how to do technical, the technical side of film is, is, is a really great asset. Um, and I do believe that, that women supporting each other and working together and encouraging each other um, is, a, is a really strong and useful thing. I mean, in Australia we have 
an amazingly strong uh, um, number of female directors. I mean, uh, producers, I'm sorry, Kate, and, and directors. <laughs> But there's a, lot, there's a lot of female producers, like there's Liz Watts, there's, there's Rose Blight. Um, I mean, many of them. Um, recently, I went to the film school to talk to the producing students, and um, I think there was about 12, and 11 of them were women. I mean, that in itself is a phenomenon that, that's interesting, because there would have been uh, maybe two out of eight in the directing um, students. 